What's up guys, Moon Man here. Today I'm in Shelbyville, Tennessee to check out the grave of a very famous and intelligent animal, a horse, an Arabian horse known as the beautiful Jim Key. Let's go talk about it. All right, so Jim Key, he was born in 1889. He was owned by Dr. William Key, a former slave who was taught to read and write by his master's wife, even though it was illegal at the time. Um, he taught Jim, he, he knew, he, his wife, Mr. Key's wife learned and known that Jim would, would shake his head uh, yes or no if he wanted a carrot or a sugar cube or something. And they said, okay, this horse is pretty intelligent. They'd already tried to train dogs and other animals like that. And he was eventually successful in training roosters and uh, other, like, other equines and dogs and cats and stuff, do certain things. But... He found Jim to be especially special and especially intelligent. So he began to do kind training with him and to be really patient with Jim. And he would reward Jim for the you know things he did, the good things he did. And eventually he was able to teach the Jim, which was an Arabian Hamiltonian mixed horse. It says famous Arabian Hamiltonian educated horse, beautiful Jim Key, 1889 to 1912. Um, he was able to teach him to count to 30. Jim could count to 30. And he could also, he taught him how to move a clock handle to tell the accurate time. Not only that, as you see depicted right here, he taught Jim how to spell his name in chalk. Now Jim could do that, he could spell other words, but he didn't prefer it because he didn't like the way the, talk, the chalk tasted. So they gave him the special board and Jim would um, actually spell on that board uh, at one point in time they brought a bunch of sixth graders out to go against Jim and um, Jim actually ended up winning because he could spell words like physics and constitution and uh, the name Isaac he could spell that name and they could not do it no dr. key he had some hardships of himself other than just being born as a slave he actually he actually was uh, one time accused of being a spy and at one point in time was actually hunted by the KKK. Well, he was he was uh, by some lawmen who were not very upstanding. He was caught and it was said that he actually won his freedom from them in a high stakes poker match. And one way or another, they were able to, you know, Jim started becoming kind of famous. People kind of started knowing, oh, this horse is pretty intelligent. And uh, he was able to actually take him to the World's Fair. And I believe it was like 19... 04 or so and um more than 10 million people are estimated to have come and seen jim do the things that he did and write that oh yeah jim was the most intelligent horse that i guess that there ever was um some people compared it to clever hans another horse who was famous for this except clever hans he was he was he was found to he had certain cues that he did and um the, the owner would give him certain cues and that's what he would do when he would do the things well People, the most logical thing is that's what probably happened with Jim. But the Harvard professors actually came out there. A bunch of people from Harvard came out. And Key, um, doc, Dr. Key, he actually went somewhere else. He went out of the room and left him for an hour or two with him. And they could not decipher. He, Jim was doing all the stuff that he normally did. And they could not decipher um, what was causing him to do that. Other than he must just be an educated horse. And the reason Jim is here uh, in Shelbyville is actually that's where Dr. Keith lived. He was actually born on a plantation in Shelbyville. Um, these people over here, here's a little in more in memorial to Jim's dear friend. You see people have left a few things. Uh, there's even a Juneteenth Freedom Day, which was not very long ago. So this was very recent. And you see uh, Albert R. Rogers, he was the promoter, he helped promote, um, helped promote Jim. And then you had Monk Powell, which I do believe is the dog, who was also trained by Dr. Key. And I think that's him on the back of Jim right there. Now, unfortunately, like all things, everything comes to an end. Unfortunately, Dr. Key would pass away, and then not too much longer after, Jim would too. And they would uh, erect, they erected this here, and it's still public to this day. It is in someone's yard. Uh, I actually met the lady and asked her, and she said, yeah, it's public, just don't park in our driveway. And uh, so here, here I am. 
Another thing I want to add is that he actually met three presidents. He met Teddy Roosevelt, he met William McKinley, and William Howard Taft. Uh, Jim would tell, he would spell out on his little board that they would give him instead of this, uh, different words and all that. He'd like to tell um, the other presidents that he was a Democrat, even if they were Republicans. Jim was just, he just, he, I guess he was a Democrat. And uh, he actually at one time is said to have predicted Roosevelt's daughter's um, future husband. He wrote out her married name, what her married name would eventually be, even though she was not even engaged to the suitor yet. It says here, be kind to animals. Booker T. Washington also came and also did see Jim. It says, kindness, justice, and mercy to all creatures. Very good thing to live by. Looks like right there, there may have been a thing to put flowers in. It looks like there might have been something right here too that might have had more things, other signage on this side beforehand. But anyways, guys, that's it here in Shelbyville, Tennessee, the grave of the beautiful Jim Key. Hope you guys like, subscribe, and share, because Moon Man, he's out.